listen, what do you do for fun in, in summer? Are you, do you have anything that you collect or you're into sports still? Or what, what's, what, what, roles, what roles with Ryan to keep him decompressed from all this going on? You got a little one in your life now, so it's a lot, man. Yeah, it's definitely, I have, I definitely have hobbies. I have things I'm interested in. So much of that shifts when you have like kids though. So a lot of it is kind of revisiting stuff from the past. So a lot of like old Disney movies I've been into lately, uh, as well as the new Disney movies that my daughter likes. And I now have much more of a fondness for like traveling to Disney and places like that. So I definitely like those sorts of things. But then for me personally, um, still, I'm very much into music. I've always been into music. So I enjoy playing guitar. I enjoy listening to music, all those things. Recently, I've gotten more into videography uh, and photography. So and YouTube kind of led me to that. I was making YouTube videos and I was like, I want a better camera. So then I started watching all the YouTube videos teaching you about which camera you should buy and then how to use these different settings. And that got me interested in that. So yeah. that's like a new interest of mine. Yeah, that I've Yes, but I'm an old dog. I, I'm not able to. I, I, I've, I've got. I just keep trying to. Le I, I stole from a Think Media, Sean Cano. Like just level yeah. up. Just keep leveling up. Just get it a little bit better and a little bit better. But at some point, it's like analysis can lead to paralysis. Man, I'm not getting anything done. So I've got to kind of go. All right, this is where I'm at for now. For keep sure. Working through it. But all right, well that's cool. What, what, what music are we? What, what are you into? I'm always trying to find stuff because we're past the age where there's like radio music and there's like a top 40 list. And I, so now it's just word of mouth. So I'm yes. all, I'm all, I'm going to open my browser so I can make sure I pop stuff in there to spend time with I'm always like looking for new stuff. So what would you recommend? What's out there that you're like, that's mm. good. This is good. You got anything going on? It's interesting. When I think of what I'm listening to like most frequently now, well, I'll just go into like my recently played. <clears throat> so Kanye's last album, I've listened to a lot. His last album, Donda. I've yep. I've enjoyed that I one a lot. To that uh, yesterday, yeah, yep. I've been listening to that. Um, honestly, anything that's like newer R and B or like things that have uh -huh. elements of new R and B, I'm very much into. So that's like all Frank Ocean hasn't put out anything in a few years, but pretty much anything Frank Ocean, I love. I love all of his albums. I love all of his work. I'm always waiting for him to drop more music. Um, Okay. The 1975. I don't think I know of anything that's really recent. Yeah, Frank's like, I mean, he put, he's put out singles and stuff's leaked, but as far as albums go, nothing there. Okay. So I've been waiting on that. Um, okay. Band wise, I really like the 1975. I listen to the 1975 quite a bit. Um, always, me and my friend always joke. We always say we have the musical taste of like a teenage girl, and I think that's probably pretty accurate <laughs> so most of my recommendations okay. just just look listen to them through that lens and just have that expectation <laughs> well i you know it's funny because i i you know i'm pretty transparent about my love of christian music i have this thing where i was so we, we got back into faith my wife was really much more into christian music than i was younger so she knew all these different bands or whatever and mm. it's like one album one artist one album one artist and then i sort of like I don't even remember when it was if we went with the youth group or whatever we went to what was called winter jam and there's like 10 different bands and they're mostly from different genres and i'm like what and then i suddenly realized christian metal is not like two guys it's 20 guys mm. and christian rap is like a thing and like oh wait a minute there's this so it was real easy to expand into a library yeah and then for me, of course, I'm old school. So it's like this 80s, 90s stuff that's cheesy and poppy and just, for sure. yeah. So I have, and I, and, I, and I love just the life of experience of music and how influential it is. So I'm interested in asking you in something though, because yeah, you hit someone, me up, whatever. As someone who enjoys like Christian music, how, mm -hmm. how do you feel about, because I've seen people pre torn on this. How yes. do you feel about Kanye's like last few albums, like this one as well as like the Jesus is King album? And like some of his work that is definitely has religious influence, you know, in some of the samples he's using and, and definitely in some of the subject matter. But like, what are your thoughts on that kind of music? That is like, it's probably kind of a stretch to call that Christian music, <laughs> but yeah, like, how so, do you feel about that stuff? Yeah, I, I am probably in like a bubble that's not as big as other people's bubbles. And I'll sound more like a Christian artist because I am a, 
one of my principles as uh, you know whether i would teach the bible or whatever i would always try to tell people is listen, the biggest thing about the principle of god that is ex exceedingly easy for me to point out to you is he is not trying to get you under his boot <laughs> god is not interested in throwing people out of the club mm. he has to throw people out of the club but that is not what he's interested in doing so i'm more interested in trying to find people who are being honest about their faith and their faith journey and I do know there's going to be a long road with that. And I just actually just saw there's a film called Jesus Music that's just in theaters. My wife and I saw it on Sunday. And it's like a documentary of Christian music dating back to the 70s during this revival. And I learned a whole lot about different artists and things I really don't know much about. But what was interesting is the biggest thing, one of the struggles that most of the world is the church won't tolerate them. They're not, they've gone too secular or they won't allow this kind of music. Or what. And I'm more like, ah, listen whatever let's go let's go so i don't have all i want is to know i'm i'm happy for kanye i want i want kanye to have a relationship with god i truly believe in the christian god is about love and in that it will shape your heart and make you a better person if you can learn to love god with all your heart therefore you'll love your neighbors and become selfless and just Jesus basically got it down to two principles because we couldn't handle 10 <laughs> because it's basically the same as the 10 commandments, right? You have four that are saying, love God with all your heart. And you have six going, how do you deal with your neighbors? So whether it's Kanye, whether it be, you know, audio adrenaline, uh, skillet, uh, bands that are, you know, you got one foot in this world, one foot in that world. I, I don't, I don't really care too much. If you, if you say or do something I don't like, I just like, yeah, I'm going to listen to that. So I'm more like, you know, okay, you know, I mean, I grew up listening to 80 songs that I can't imagine that I would ever listen to because I've read the lyrics in 2021, 20, you know, <laughs> modern standards. I'm like, oh my God, that's what that says. Like, yeah. how did I not? And I don't know how much is apathy, how much is just de being desensitized, how much is, I, I don't know. And I got to be honest, I don't care. There's no reason to all. The world is too big. There's too much stuff to get really obsessed. You know, if I was sitting down with Kanye and I would get to know him and understand who he really is and not, not the persona I think he is or I can kind of perceive, then it would be easier to make an evaluation of it. But I don't get to do that. So for me, if, uh, you know, a, a Christian artist is on stage with some secular heathen in my brain, my brain goes, Boy, I, sure, I sure hope they rub off on that person. And I've told, <laughs> I've told, I've told, I said this from a pulpit. I said, the greatest thing we could ever do is pray for the nastiest, atheist, political, whatever you name people, and they were to get saved. Could you imagine if Bill Maher was like, got saved tomorrow and was on fire for Jesus? <laughs> Richard Dawkins' heart was healed and suddenly was like in this conflict. That is the greatest thing that could ever happen because it saves that individual. And hopefully because of the voice, it would change someone else. Yeah, That's kind of how I look at it. And I know that's crazy, but I've read Bonhoeffer and I know the stories. I've seen people's lives, like criminals change personally. I can't, I can't carry a stick. I just can't go around and do it. And I know that there has to be elements of correction in the church. I know there has to be elements of, of, of teaching that is not what we want to hear because God is trying to teach you not to be selfish and we are by nature and I deal with it every day I do things I did things today that I don't even know that I did and God will bring to my mind uh, I enjoy music that feeds me in the moment I just did a live stream I think it was last week where I was joking about journey and I went to my safe happy place in the 80s was listening to don't stop believing <laughs> and it become this it become this metaphor for politics about you know, so just just keep the faith keep the faith keep the faith and the song is not even really about that it's about yes. this relationship thing but it was just you know you know you know yeah so i didn't know that i even really stumbled across answering your question in a way but yeah i'm like more of like the i try to be less judgmental i i don't know i'm probably not really good at it and i'm subconsciously <laughs> not good at it because you your brain just does things yeah. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I'm actually really struggling to be perfectly transparent about my stuff, my sin. I'm having a hard time with like the masks, the mask of 
mask oppressionist stuff right now. Like this is this weird oppression and just trying to unperson people. Like I, what? Like why do you care what yeah. they're doing? Can you worry about yourself? Like if you don't want if you don't like what that person's doing, don't go near that person. That's what I do. I just right. Don't go to that person. That's so. been one of my biggest conflicts, I think, in my thought is that I pretty much landed in a very or politically, at least I thought I landed in a very like libertarian position on most pretty much every issue. But that's always the thing that I try to balance is at what point should there be interaction or involvement between people? Because I think I do agree with you where largely it's like, let's leave people alone. But then it's like, because I want to leave people alone because I want to be left alone. But then also like there are some people in which I think require help or need help and it's some of it is like the source of like where does that help come from right because some of it's people that are all trying to say government's role is to do xyz and then some people are saying no communities should do those things and that that's always been my biggest thing with a lot of like libertarian positions i land on is how do i balance that like personally in my life like how do i Mm -hmm. then go forth and like help people where i can and how do i like hold myself accountable for those sorts of things especially since i think my disposition is rather um individualistic to like think like oh i can do things and i want other people to be able to do things and like how can i enable them to do stuff do you uh seek out starting up conversations with people like at work that you don't know well but you've kind of you, you're always relationship building i think yeah. our, i think when our faith that's one of the big things for me is when my, I can tell you when my faith like kicked in because that's how I think about things. Now I enjoy and I look forward to chatting with people that I kind of have. It's like an acquaintance meter. You know, I know they exist. That's like the zero. And then I learn a little bit more about them. Then I learn a little bit more. I find some people I have some common set, common ground with and it moves faster. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. Like, I don't know that it's about leaving them alone as much as it is, I'm not trying to beat them over the head with whatever issue they're bringing up, uh, but rather just trying to be a sensible voice in the wilderness of chaos in this world. Like maybe if there's anything they need, I could actually fill that gap. I don't know. I mean, opportunities arise when we make ourselves willing to be the legs to what God wants us to do. Mm, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. Well, good.